Hello, my friends. Welcome to another day in the arena. But if you look around, you can see clearly it is not just another day. If you caught some of the stream highlight uploads I sent to YouTube over the weekend, you know that Dominaria has been released and that we have all kinds of new economy features. You also know, if you watch those stream highlights, and I'll put some links if you haven't, that we opened 360 packs and built up a collection so that we could start building some closer to constructed, closer to finished decks and a good variety of them. So that will let us make much more YouTube content with much more uh, polished decks to show you for your viewing pleasure and for the for you to aspire to as you collect your wild cards and might want to cash in and build some decks. The first deck that we're going to play today is God Pharaoh's Gift Is It. And is it God Pharaoh's Gift? Yes, indeed, is it is. Uh, bad jokes. There's just no way to play that perfectly. Not really. Um, but if you've got is it puns, go ahead and put them in the comments. So here's what we're up to. We've got a bit of a combo in the deck. Combat Celebrant, when you uh, exert it, creates a new combat step. And at the beginning of every combat step, God Pharaoh's Gift exiles a creature from your graveyard and makes a copy of it. So if you have multiple combat celebrants or ways to clone them with, say, a Vizier of Many Faces, then holy guacamole, your God Pharaoh's Gift plan goes crazy. And I'm sure that we'll see that a few times. The rest of the deck, you need to have a very heavy creature count to trigger Gate to the Afterlife. It needs six creature cards in the graveyard. So we have Strategic Planning, we have Search for Kanta, and then we have things that either die easy or go to the graveyard. Skirk Prospector, you can sack for mana. Firebrand, you can do a damage. Scrounger loots when it attacks. Don't be afraid to suicide scavenge it. And we got Champawitz, uh, who is a master at putting things in the yard. Warkite Marauder is an interesting card in the deck that kind of takes a... It, it can make any creature into a 0-1, which as a combo with Firebrand can kill it. This doesn't happen too often, but it also is a good preamble to our only real control card in the deck, Sweltering Suns. Which, so if we attack with a Warkite Marauder and make, say, a Ripjaw Raptor an 0-1, then Sweltering Suns can kill it. So that's justifying its place in the deck. In the mana base, we're using Sulphur Falls, which is a big mana upgrade for the deck, Highland Lake, and If New Rivulets, three of them. Most of the time, this is to mill ourself and try to reach a higher creature count in the graveyard to make our God Pharaoh's Gift plan awesome. All right, let's take the deck out for a spin. We're going to... Um, the economy has introduced several new things, such as Quick Constructed Leagues, which play to seven. And it has also introduced uh, Draft, but that doesn't start, as you see here, for 95 more hours. Um, but uh, one of the ideas uh, that I'm going to have is to do my daily quests, or at least my first four wins of the day to earn my pack, um, is going to be to play in regular Ranked Constructed with the deck for these videos. And then I might make a separate video if I think the deck is competitive or close to competitive where we play it in a quick constructed league. So as you see, they've revite, kind of revamped the deck boxes here. They now kind of chomp at you. Arrow, I am a deck box. How would you, would you like to fight today? Would you like to play magics? It's very fun. And um, they also revamped the screen. So when you need to change decks, you click this. It opens over here. You can pick the deck you want to play. And then you hit play. And away we go. Hear that sweet, sweet battle music. All right, we'll be on the draw for this one. So we'll keep that in mind while looking at our hand. And our opponent takes a mulligan, we'll keep that in mind too. But this hand is very ideal. Gate to the afterlife is something you wanna see pretty often along with a couple dorks. And our opponent's going to open on a sacred cat. 
going to deploy the firebrand, but I'm not going to shoot it right away. Ideally, we won't use the firebrand. And I'm not even going to block or trade here. Ideally, we don't use the firebrand brand until we play a gate to the afterlife for two to get the loot effects. And it looks like our opponent might be on the white-blue embalmed token deck. Nope. Something more akin to the white-blue... Um, Aura's deck is what it looks like. So having a Firebrand up is really good against these kind of decks as you can get around their auras. So I'm going to play a second Firebrand and we're going to keep up this disguise that we're a mono red deck. People often assume they're against mono red when they see Firebrands. But no need to block here, no need to panic, no need to kill anything yet. Right now, the Firebrands are keeping our opponent from playing auras like Squire's Devotion or Cartouches. Alright, now we'll show our opponent that we're a little different than they expected, and we'll end the turn. It says, whenever a creature, a non-token creature dies, we gain one life and draw a card and discard a card. These abilities do stack, so if we put out both gates, we can sacrifice a Firebrand, kill an opposing creature, draw two cards, discard two cards, and gain two life. That's why I'm not worried about taking much damage right now. Now our opponent is probably trying to figure out what they're going to do in the wake of this new information. And they're going to keep on attacking, and I'm going to keep letting them attack. As long as these are out there, they can't really do much with auras. And as long as we have a second gate to play, we'll eventually just be able to do a lot of looting, fill our graveyard, and win the game. Okay, drawing a God Pharaoh's Gift isn't the greatest, but we can just loot it into the graveyard. Gate to the Afterlife searches the hand, the graveyard, and the library. So discarding the God Pharaoh's Gift isn't risky unless we think our opponent has a Scavenger Grounds. And I'm not too worried about that right now. So now we'll play this gate. And since we can't do a GPG this turn anyway, we'll just say go again and buy another turn. But it's very likely with the looting that we're going to do, that we might be able to make this go off next turn. All right, now that we're in combat and an aura isn't coming down, we'll use uh, at least one of these. And why not both? So we'll block so that our opponent doesn't gain the life, prevent the damage. We'll put these triggers on, draw. Discard, draw, discard. Skirk Prospector is a great one with multiple gates. And it will do this again. Because uh, you can make a mana and get the draw discard triggers. All right, strategic planning, huh? I think at this point we'll get rid of the search. All right, there's a Celebrant. That's who we were looking for. We definitely wanted one of those. And we're up to four creatures. This will be five. So if there's a creature anywhere near the top of the deck, we'll be able to activate this no problem. Our opponent will bring back their sacred cat. What's the next play? Is it time to suit up something? Maybe a curious obsession? Maybe a cartouche? Maybe a squire's devotion? Squire's devotion is a little redundant here. So our opponent will go with cartouche of knowledge. All right. Champion of Wits is a welcome one that can almost certainly do the job, but Skirk Prospector is actually even better, as you'll see here. We'll put it out for one mana. Our opponent has a dive down up. That seems pretty clear. Sack it for mana, trigger the gates twice. And we still have the mana in the mana pool. So we just need to discard a creature, and we're home free. All right, champ can go. And the Scrounger can go. I'm also going to cast a Strategic Planning. Or we could just do get Double Gate to the Afterlife, which is actually a lot better. So no, never mind. There's no need for that. So let's go off. And let's search our library and grab that. Now let's do that again. Let's search our graveyard, because we discarded the other earlier. We'll play this in case we get a Storm Tamer 
Siren Storm Tamer in the yard and want to use it for something. Now away we go. We want our Combat Celebrant. And we want our Champion of Wits to try to find more Combat Celebrants or Viziers to put into the graveyard. Alright. So we'll draw four and discard two, hopefully finding more Celebrants. And we did not. So we'll get this attack step and possibly another one, but it should still be a lot of damage. And so we exert the Celebrant. You pretty much always want to. And that what that's going to do is untap this, and then at the end of the combat, create another combat where we'll get two more creatures back. Opponent considering blocks. Um, without another Celebrant or a way to clone a Celebrant, the turn will get passed back to our opponent, but we have to decide what we want to get. And I think... Oh, our opponent's seen enough. I think we'd want to get the Battlefield Scavengers to try to get deeper in the deck and keep finding more. All right. There you have it. 250 gold and our first win. Let's go see if we can find another. Economy changes now. They do not give you cards for your wins, but you do get a higher gold payout than you did before. You also um, have access to those quick constructed events, which I'm sure I'll do a future video. I'll do an event with um, possibly a deck that we cover, possibly this blue-red deck. So keep an eye out for that. We'll be on the draw again. This hand is a little bit slow as he's enter tapped, but it has most of the things we'd want to see. It doesn't have a gate, but we have multiple ways to dig into the deck. Opponent opens with a planes. Let's see where it leads. And an anointer priest, so possibly another token deck. We draw a gate to the afterlife, which is excellent. Now we have a decision to make with whether or not to play a scrounger that we may exert. Or to play strategic planning here. I actually like getting the scrounger on the battlefield, as the sooner we use it, the more likely we are to get multiple uses out of it. Okay, opponent passing turn. Exert. You almost always want to exert in this deck as the loot is the main draw to the card. And we're going to discard the Vizier. Of course, I should be saying rummage, not loot. Um, against a white deck, I do not like playing Gate to the Afterlife early. It can get Ixalan's Binding or Cast Out. So I don't like exposing the gate here. So instead, we're going to do strategic planning and play a Skirk Prospector as the plan for the rest of the turn. We could also just deploy our creatures. Hmm. It kind of leaves this awkward beatdown strategy, but Warkite Marauder is an interesting card that can do some funky things to the opponent's blocking ideas. So yeah, I think I'll actually deploy some creatures. We'll see what our opponent wishes to do. Perhaps to seal away the scrounger. Ah, Field of Ruin. Targets the Sulphur Falls. And I suppose we'll grab an island. And our opponent fixes their mana to have some blue. A Vizier the Anointed. Let's see what they wish to put into their graveyard. Probably a Champion of Wits is the most common. But this is an example of a creature that we can make into a 0-1 with our Warkite Marauder so that we can still keep attacking if we want to. An Angel of Sanctions. Okay. Hmm. So, still no... Just one creature in the graveyard. Let's see if we can change that here.
And not too much. Something like a champion of wits would have been very ideal. Alright, so we'll go combat. I guess attacking with that will just get it dead, so we'll go with one attacker. Hopefully at least next turn we get to scavenge a little bit more. Play another prospector. Uh, that's two more creatures that can go direct to the graveyard, so that brings us to four. It also gives us two loot, so this can get us another loot. So we might be able to get there. Our opponent taps out for annoying procession, so this would be a great time to try to go off. We do need to draw some combat celebrants, though. Hmm. Just trying to decide how to attack here. I think we'll put this out first. And then see if we can go off. So we'll sack. Another land. All right. Another land. This draw has been very unfortunate so far. One, two, three, four. So we can still hit a creature here. Or. We can just have a gate activation up after combat and kill off the Vizier. All right. I guess that's probably wise. If we don't hit a creature here, we can't really do too much damage because we don't have a Celebrant yet either. So play the land, we'll go to combat, attacks with you, exert you, target here. We'll discard this land. Draw search for his Kanta. All right. We'll sack here. Kill you. Take action. Draw a card. Drew a Marauder. So we can put that in the graveyard. And now we have activation up. So we're just going to pass the turn with the activation up. So if our opponent targets it with a Ixalan's Binding or an Angel of Sanctions, we can just activate in response. And then we can also do it on end step. If our opponent just passes with mana open, we might not activate it due to the cast out potential, but they are tapping mana, so no cast out. That's an interesting target for a Vizier the of many faces potentially if we want to get deeper in our deck and try to go off but I don't know if that will be the play all right so end step sack so we have lots of mana available next turn if we want it go to do not hit fail to find by the way this is what I did the first time I activated a Godfair's gift um, I hit this fail to find you have to go over here and click on library or graveyard or wherever you're looking. Ooh. What's this do? Again, we don't have the combo pieces. Sweeping their board? Is that really good? I think we want to save that um, for if our opponent produces, say, a bajillion cats. So... We'll go to the combat step. And I think we'll just make a flyer, another War Kite Marauder, and get him for damage. So not quite comboing just yet, just playing the God Pharaoh's value game. There we go, please fly. I, I, would, have been, I would have been very confused if it didn't fly for any reason. All right, so now we're just clocking them in the air. 
Our opponent could definitely and probably will bring out an Angel of Sanctions. But we can Vizier many faces, at least one of them, to make sure we get our gift back. Oh, Ixalan's Binding is very annoying. So, Binding likely coming down on the gift means we're going to have to win with the beatdown plan. And whether or not we can is to be determined. I've never actually faced this issue. could graveyard it then if I draw a land I can bring it back but I think I'll just draw it and cast it all right I don't really think I want Scavenger to go in and trade with the champ, but my opponent's handicapped on mana, so why not, right? I can make these both 0-1s. Is there... I guess I could find a hasty creature to add to the board. But what's probably the best play? The best play might be getting this Vizier and just making another... But I still like saving this for the Angel Sanctions to at least take out one of their Angels because the Annoying Procession does give him two, which is very annoying. Our opponent's at 10. Is there a way to do two more damage? I can do one more, but if I found a Firebrand, but to do two more? Don't see it. I don't see it right now. Well, I guess I could hit two fanatical firebrands. That won't do either. All right, let's go. And we're going to target the Champa Wits, but not the Anointer Priest, because then he can knock it down and gain life with it. So we don't want to do that. So we give him a bit of a free block here. All right. But that's actually fine. All right, so down to four, and our turn ended. So we didn't get another phase after that, which I was expecting. I guess our timeouts did run to zero. Sorry for taking so long. Game does get complicated with this deck. Let's see if our opponent found the land for that Angel of Sanctions play. They did not, but they did find an Ixalan's Binding, so looks like he's going to use it over here. That'll likely cost us pretty quite a bit. Um, but I can clear this out of the way and win the game still, which is sort of ridiculous after all this time. All right, let's uh, do this. Fail to find. Most uh, Search for His Contact activations will be fail to find. Sweltering Suns kills our own creatures. So what I need here is a fanatical firebrand. Let's see if we can find it. Cannot find it. I'm just going to send this. Again, killing this is not, um, it's a May, right? Target creature. Okay, it's not a May, so I really don't want to kill this. He can bring it back to gain that life. It'll be very tragic if we end up losing the game based on the timeout there, but I guess I would deserve that playing a little too slow. But our opponent will scoop him up. Apparently doesn't have the answer. They were very patient uh, considering how long we took, so thanks to them for that. 
didn't spam any emotes at me, which I probably deserved. This is, let's see, on the scale of like 1 to 10 for difficulty to play, I do think this is an 8 or a 9. Um, you can do most of the deck and win most of the games pretty straightforward once you figure out the combo, but there are definitely a lot of nuances and little interactions uh, with Skirk Prospector, with Battlefield Scavenger, with Warkite Marauder that you do not get uh, the first time through that uh, can help you pull off ridiculous things with the deck. Opponent maybe on some kind of assault eye list. I think our best bet here is just strategic planning for land, whereas because play, playing the scrounger just puts it at risk. And we do not find that land. Ugh. Well, I don't think I'll need the sweltering suns. I'll take this champ in hopes that we hit that land drop. Oof. That was not nice. That's not nice either. Well, our play is very straightforward. But I expect this to die. Uh-huh. Essence Scatter is actually good to get out of the hand. Our opponent with a search for his Kanta. We, we have a tap land, so we'll try for another sc scavenger. This resolves. Looks like our opponent is at least out of two mana counters and removal. Keep their top card, which is never good. <laughs> Almost certainly means it's the land they needed or something like that. All right. There is the Scarab God. So once that happens, we need like a bunch of cheap goblins in our hand or something like that to fill our graveyard all in one fell swoop. But really, uh, it's going to be almost impossible to beat the Scarab God. But what we need to do is just try to catch our opponent being greedy. And like I said, fill our graveyard all in one swoop using activations from Skirk Prospector and such. Interesting. Opponent feeling very, very feisty. <laughs> Well, how many creatures can we put in the yard? I think we'll attack. He'll reanimate something. And then we'll try to fill it back up. Let's see what happens here. Well, he's probably going to reanimate something from this attack and block with it. Or at least that's what we want to trick him into doing. Therefore, we'll toss away the gift for starters. Okay. Uh, he's going to be very patient, it appears. How greedy is he? Ah, uh, he's, he's greedy. So we got a chance here. All right, here we go. We're going to try to... Flood the yard, I suppose. But if we put the celebrants in, he'll grab one of those right away. But I guess that's better than grabbing a champ of wits. All right, so one, two, three. Just one extra mana is probably not going to do it here. Found the lands. That missed land drop early is so crucial when it comes to trying to beat a Scarab God. Can he get to eight mana and pull two creatures from me? One, two, three, four, five, six. He did not flip search. He was way off from that. So gain eight mana, probably not. Well, he's going to try to fill up his own yard. All right. 
Dude. You sure? You sure that's the play? It's a bold he's a bold one. Couldn't hit another land. That really stings. Aha! Can I loot you? I need you in the graveyard. How do I get you there? Any creature dies, that will happen, but do I have something I can just sacrifice? A skirt prospector I can, but that's going to be hard to get to. Hmm. I could go for one more fill up with Rivulet. Or I could just cast it. I suppose casting it might get it countered. Let's find out. Okay. So, now what? Opponent's letting it happen. He can't, um, there's no chance to, re to um, combat like in response to the trigger. Also having this out lets me vizier it. Oops. And now our opponent's gonna scare God. Sure. And now we'll get the Vizier. Copy you. Exert. Takes that. Okay. Now we'll get... can't one point kill anything one damage isn't gonna matter I could get another loot that's not gonna matter we'll take the jam take action two cards you're not gonna matter and you can be in the graveyard now one two three four five we're almost certainly going to die on the way back. So I could just not attack here so that I have an unta a few untapped ones to use. Yeah, we can't attack. But if our opponent lets us live... Okay, he's going to upkeep grab a firebrand. I guess playing to kill this, but that does mean I can just give it get it back. Opponent with the zombie drain is gonna put us to nine. If he exerts here, but we trade here. Chump trade here? Okay. He's been very, very aggressive. I'm guessing he'll probably get his exert on here. Scared God coming in hot. Huh? Yeah, uh, there's not much we can do now because we're going to take we're, we're going to die either way. So you saw one of the uh, painful weaknesses. If you miss land drops and the opponent gets an early scare of God, you are in a heap of trouble. I thought we made a good fight of it, and I don't really like how our, our opponent played most of the game, but it works out for them anyway because scare of God is so powerful. We'll give this about 10 seconds to launch before we abandon. All right. 
Try Req. Alright. Again, this is an excellent hand. All we need is a land or even a Skirk Prospector to draw. So I'm going to risk it. We also have cards like Strategic Planning, but that didn't get us a land last turn either. Or last game. Oh, that's very, very unfortunate. We do not have a Fanatical Firebrand for this Lanoir Elves. Interesting. Maybe our opponent having land issues too? Well... Look at that, two games in a row, we cannot play a third land. It does seem to be an arena thing. Now, it I would say it's a magic thing, but I honestly do believe that lately it's been an arena thing that you do not hit your land drops. I don't think the shuffler works the way that they want it to. Wow. The good news is we don't have to let it get exiled. So red, green, dino, monsters, something like that. Found the land. It's not looking good, though. The inability to draw more is absolutely breathtaking. All right. Well, more fun games. I do find it important to leave games like that in as much as you may not learn anything from them, I don't want to give the impression that mana screw never happens. I know that many times people pick up a deck of mine, go play it, and say the mana is bad because they had a few bad games that they may not see uh, when they watch the YouTube video. And I want you to know it happens to everybody. It doesn't mean necessarily that there's terrible mana or that the deck is no good. It is very much a part of magic and very much a part of arena. The arena algorithm uh, has been much talked about, and you can keep talking about that if you like, but it does favor two land hands pretty aggressively, and sometimes you will not draw a third if there are only 20 lands left in your deck. And that's the way it goes. Bouncing it, all part of the game. Almost made a mistake. But yeah, I think we just want to get the Warkite Marauders going. The prospectors, the prospectors are, you know, they're not ramping anything right this minute. They can come out in a in a few turns. That looks like a green deck returns. Green red. Is this just a rematch? It appears to be. Opponent's going to think about that magma spray. Uh, seems like a no-brainer unless they don't have a red source. So I'm guessing that might be the problem here. And maybe our opponent will have some mana trouble for this game. And yep, they do indeed bin it. Now remember, the plus one, plus one counter still exists. So that's why you have a one, two, not an O oh, one. Something else to watch out for when you're playing. Right, we're gonna need a gate or some strategic planning, some cards to dig through the deck a little bit. But against a deck like this, you can just crowd up the board, trade creatures, plan to draw gate and just win, or just get damage in. Depends how on the front foot you are. So our opponent does seem to be missing that red mana and they're gonna play a Song of Freilis, which is not something I've seen in the green red monster style deck. It's going to let his Merfolk Branchwalker tap for one man of any color. Let's see what they do with it. Perhaps play a Lightning Strike or a Magma Spray. Ah, Nerd Shaker Kenra. I see, I see. 
All right, target the, sp the prospector. Attack. Uh, I'm fine with blocking here. The creatures are going to get a lot better, so trading creatures is a good idea right now. Because Song of Freilis will build them up. Send that in. Get out more prospectors. And now we're really looking to draw Gate to the Afterlife or God Pharaoh's Gift right off the top. We do have seven mana available right now. This is where the deck misses Trophy Mage, a card from uh, Kaladesh or Aether Revolt, one of those that would be very helpful in the... Very, very helpful here. Opponent not attacking this time. I guess they've learned a lesson. Now, next turn, their creatures are going to gain plus one, plus one counters, Vigilance, Trample, and Indestructible. So, I don't plan to block next turn. So, we may as well be attacking. Make that a zero one. Get him for that damage. And then we'll play the Celebrant. Hopefully it will not be Magma Sprayed. And it doesn't look like our opponent has that Magma Spray, or they could have done it on their turn. Although this did lose the mana making ability from the Marauder, so that's a fun sequencing situation. This, with a song, he could have tapped Earthshaker Kenra for red mana, except for the part where we uh, made it a 0-1 with no abilities. All right, our opponent got in there. So what do we want to do? We could copy the Earthshaker Kenra, but it would not be big enough so to make anything unable to block so something is going to something is still going to get to block but we get a second attack step and we can make one of these creatures like make this a 1 2 it will probably trade with the celebrant then our opponent will probably block over here on the vizier kenra and our opponent will take 5 damage then on second attack step Let's see. We can make this an 0-1, which would kill it, and then we would get him for five more damage if our opponent blocks the way that I think they will. And yep, so we'll target over here. We exert here. And our opponent's gonna scoop it up. Wow. Great. I, they did have some ways to block that would have survived. I Just the way that I expected them to block would have left them dead. So uh, that was one of those ones where we win the game on basically our opponent having a little bit of mana issues. A little hiccup there and we just got him got in there with our creatures. Hmm. I don't think I can keep this one either. Ugh. Okay. Uh, this hand could go wrong in so many ways, but let's keep it. And I do not want another one of those on top. And I guess we'll just get in there. I like being the fake mono red deck. I tilt pretty hard when I play against mono red, so I like picturing my opponent freaking out. They're gonna duress me for nothing. I like that. Play you. Play you. Sequencing doesn't matter when the opponent's tapped out, can do nothing. Get in there with our critters. We're gonna pass the turn. We'll show them the rivulet. They don't know about this mountain or this champion. All attack. All right, please don't counter my champion of wits. Now, opponent missed it there. Skirk Prospector, my friend. So let's sacrifice a goblin. We'll sacrifice the Firebrand. And that's one of the joys of Skirk Prospector. Hmm, do I keep the Scavenger? Or do I bin it? I think I bin it. Being an awkward beatdown deck isn't really the greatest here. And hitting the land drops lets me flashback the champion of wits. 
And also I can sack this reveal it to mill myself. If I have more lands to replace it. And yep. We'll decide whether or not we want to sack this reveal it. Like I said, what I really want to get to is like champ flashback. In this game, the flood is very real. What is going on? All right, Celebrant's here. Let's get him again. Blue black control, looks like they're missing land drops, so I'm sure they want to use this treasure map. Perhaps they have a moment of craving or a cast down that they wish to play this turn. And there is a moment of crave crave. Getting hangry over here. Go ahead and deploy you. It does punch very hard if the opponent's lacking in the removal category. It does expose... I don't like playing this out most of the time as it exposes it to exile effects. But you gotta do what you gotta do. We're in kind of an awkward game here. We do have five creatures available. All right, our opponent is going to Golden Demise. Okay. They're gonna try to draw their land. They're now having mana problems too. Didn't I tell you it was a big part of Arena? Okie dokie. No fear. Ah! Resolves. Celebrant. Let's exert. That was a very good draw. And then right through a sensor. So just sometimes, just gotta go for it. Opponent would have needed a sensor, a syncopate, and a gate. Didn't have it. Look at that. Oh, look at that. We'll have to wait till next turn because we don't get one more attack step. But now, if we do untap with this, it's game over, man. Which it might have been already. Opponent's going to flip their treasure map, and we'll see if they can find a solution. Karchavarazka. Hostage taker for the God Pharaoh's gift. All right. But they can't cast it this turn. And they may have to block. Let's see what we uh, can do here. If we find another fanatical firebrand, we might be able to ninja a victory, although they have treasures that they can sacrifice. Vizier, Skirk Prospector. Vizier, the hostage taker? Seems good. I guess the best way to play around it then is to hit this land drop. All right, Let's see if our opponent has like an essence scatter. Oh, I did it wrong. I should have um, discarded the vizier and then I could bring it out of the graveyard. All right, but we still have to try. Yeah, I should have embalmed it from the graveyard. Uh, our opponent's gonna scoop it up anyway. So the little mistake not quite punished. And that is our fourth win. So that is our gold for the day. And let's check our time. I'm sure it's good enough. Yeah, we're at 49 minutes. So um, this has been uh, a day with the God Pharaoh's Gift Is It deck doing our dailies. I hope you enjoyed it. Kind of got to see it do its thing at the end. You never got to see kind of the big one turn kill but uh, it's certainly in there when you can chain celebrants and viziers. And we have a few of those in my stream highlights playlist if you want to go watch those. We did plenty of that the other night. So, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you try out the deck. Hope you like it. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.